This is Andy Perrault for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. And I'm delighted to be joined by the new Southern Area Super Bantamweight champion, Chris Bork. Chris, first and foremost, how are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, all good. good to you. Now, obviously, I just mentioned that you picked up that vacant title this past weekend, defeating Ramez Mahmood, 96-94 on points. Just reflect on your performance, Chris. How would you assess it? Yeah, um, I thought the scores were uh, wider than that. Um, when I heard it, I was quite surprised. But um, I'd, I'd, in the fight, I would have maybe gave him two rounds, possibly three. Um, I felt in control. Um, but he, he was a game kid. He kept coming and he was never disheartened and just kept carrying on. So I had to stick to my boxing, um, try to slow him down with body shots and trying to vary it. Um, but I thought I boxed well. I boxed to a plan, paced myself, and got the ten rounds under my belt, which was good to good to do. Chris, was was there anything that Ramez did on the night that surprised you at all? No, I was surprised by his toughness. I thought um, I thought I would have I thought he would have slowed down a lot quicker than what he was. Obviously, reflecting on your own performance once again. What was you disappointed in, if anything? You know, what did you feel you could have done better? I think maybe um, I boxed maybe a little bit too long on the back foot. Maybe at some points I should have held my feet a bit more and maybe thrown bigger shots and come forwards and stepped on it a bit more instead of just boxing and moving all the time. Did you feel cautious at all, obviously, being back in the one one of the first shows back in the UK, there was a lot of people who would have tuned in to watch. Did you feel cautious of, of knowing that being beyond closed doors, obviously a weird atmosphere, I, I imagine, would have kind of played on your mind as well? Yeah, it was all um, a new experience being behind closed doors and the, the, the coverage and stuff. But you, you're nervous before every fight anyway, so it, it felt the same really. But um, I, was, I, 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 was, I was thinking about the 10 rounds. I wanted to you know, make sure that I was ready to do the 10 rounds, no matter what. Talking about that atmosphere, Chris, how did you find boxing behind closed doors? <clears throat> uh, it wasn't too bad, to be honest. You know, there's still a bit of an atmosphere there, although you can't really hear it when you watch it back. But um, the corners were shouting quite a lot and it was quite back and forth with the corners and that. So it wasn't, it wasn't a dead atmosphere. It wasn't too bad, to be honest. When you can hear the corner shouting, obviously yours and then in Ramezzi's, are you still trying to pick up what Ramezzi's corner saying to try and counteract that? Is it, and then whilst picking up your own information from your corner team, is it hard to find the right balance? Yeah, kind of, you know, because you hear it and you think, ah, oh, <laughs> if his corner says, ah, oh, throw the double jab backhand, you're thinking, right, there's going to be a double jab backhand coming now or something like that. But not too much. You sort of notice it more like if they throw a shot and they miss and the, their corner says, ah, oh, good shot, you're just thinking to yourself, do you know what I mean? Like, you just you just gotta focus on your corner. You mentioned the cards as well. There, ninety six. Not last. You said you were surprised by by the cards being only ninety six, ninety four, uh, in your favour. What was your thoughts, kind of overall, on that? And how surprised surprised was you at the time? Yeah, um, yeah. When I heard it, I was surprised. And to be honest, the, from the feedback that I've got after the fight, a lot of people were as well. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I won the fight and. That's what that's what matters, Chris. It's obviously early doors as of yet. You've only just been victorious on Saturday night. But moving forwards, how do you kind of see the coming months and the rest of this year playing out for yourself? I know we're still waiting to see how kind of boxing returns in, in the next few months, if fans will return and what have you. So, how do you expect it to play out for you? Yeah, it's, it it all depends on, like you said, what's happening with the boxing and this whole virus situation and stuff. But um. Hopefully I can get back out in September, October time and, and boxing's able to have fans back in and can start filling arenas again. Is there anyone who you have your eyes on? Is there anyone in particular who's kind of catching your eye and you want to get in the ring with? There's no one particular I have my eye on, you know. It's, um, each, each fight's just to step up the, the rankings and trying to get closer towards another title. Chris, just before I let you go, just kind of reflect on the fight week procedures and how did you find this fight week in comparison to what would have normally have occurred in a normal fight week? Yeah, it was strange because from Wednesday we had to quarantine in the hotel um, and it was all the boxers. So it was, it weren't only our, like ourselves, it was also our opponents and their team and stuff. So it was unusual 
where you know you go down to breakfast you'll see them there you have lunch you see them there dinner they're there um but it it wasn't too bad it was a nice um hotel nice room you i brought like my fire stick and that so i was just watching netflix pretty much most of the time <laughs> um uh uh, it was just, it was different. And I was quite lucky, really, where two of my stable mates were fighting as well. I had a bit of company. Yeah. Um, I could imagine it being a lot, a lot worse if it was, you was the only fight, fight or fighting from your team. Um, so it wasn't too bad. I think knowing that everyone else was in the same boat as well, it, it made it a lot easier. Obviously, reflect on your, your stable mates' victories as well. Just start off with uh, Denzel for me, Chris. What, how did you assess Denzel's victory? Yeah, Denzel, Denzel's very awkward and he hits so hard. Um, I haven't actually seen all of Denzel's fight. I've seen the highlights so far, but I think um, he, he sort of worked him out and took him apart, you know, because he, he was game his opponent and he, and he came to win and I thought Denzel's done a good job. I was going to say, you know, what, what was actually you able to do on fight night? So... Was you able to see any of the fights before yours or was, was where you placed, did you not have any TV so you couldn't obviously get anybody back there or what? Yeah, it was really strict. So when you, when you went to the venue, you had to take off your glove, your mask and stuff, um, go to a doctor, they had to check your temperature, ask a few questions, and then you had to get given a whole other set of gloves and masks. Then you get taken to your changing room. And my changing room was with Denzel and Louis. But... Um, once they're warming up, they get taken to a different area and then you don't see them till, because after their fight, they then have to go straight into the cab back to the hotel. So that, there was a TV behind our um, changing room. So as I was warming up, I was going out and checking on Denzel's fight or, and Louis's fight. So I was able to see bits of it then, but I wasn't really, I wasn't able to watch it all. Well, Chris, that's obviously understandable as we know you'd have been preparing for your own bout before, uh, so after yeah. those guys. But we will leave that there now, then, Chris. But before I let you go, what would you like to say to everyone who tunes in to watch our interview and who obviously tuned in to watch your fight this past Saturday? Yeah, uh, well, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, just want to thank everyone for all the kind messages that they've sent as well. Thank you. <laughs>